Hey, it's Matt from Tradesman Digital Marketing. In today's video, I'm going to walk you through audience segments and cyclical ads. I'm going to go over the benefits of them, what they are, and essentially where you should be using them inside your Google Ads account. So first off, what is audience segments and cyclical ads? Now, Google has done a terrific job at building out a whole bunch of different segments that we can target. And this is called audience targeting. So when you're targeting specific segments, this is called audience targeting. And then the actual segments themselves are called audience segments. So what is an audience segment? And essentially an audience segment defined by Google is targeting people based on who they are, their interests, their habits, what they're actively researching and how they've interacted with your business in the past. Now, depending on the campaign you're actually running, there's a whole bunch of different ways you can actually target your audiences. So if you're using display campaigns, as you can see here are search campaigns, video campaigns, hotel, not as much, but at one of these three campaigns, you have a lot of ability to actually go in and target specific segments. So for display you can come in here and actually target affinity audiences which is targeting users based on what they're passionate about and their habits uh, you can use custom segments so you can actually build out certain segments that you want depending on a whole bunch of other factors uh, that's a little bit more complicated uh, you can go into detailed demographics so if the, their age their income level their gender uh, really whatever you want to actually segment out people by and adjust the bid limit on you can do that you can also segment them by life events so maybe they're you know moving they're getting a mortgage they're getting married Whatever it is, uh, you can generally find a audience segment for that and base it off life events. So maybe you're, if you're in a moving company, it might be uh, viable to actually target the life events of maybe people are buying a new house or they're just looking at moving into a bigger house or downgrading, whatever it is, uh, that might be really good for certain businesses. You also have the ability to target in market. So Google can actually look at people and get a good understanding of, okay, these people are researching a certain product or researching a certain service and they're willing to bet that they're in market for this certain service or product and you can actually add this in market segment to your actual campaign and you can actually go after these people google thinks are interested in your product or service which is really really good to do because then you can essentially swoop in get the sale and make money uh, there's a whole bunch of other audience segment types uh, i don't want to walk you through all of them because you probably get bored but if you have any questions about this you can actually come to this page i'll link it down below and it goes over every single audience here with a fine-tune comb and it goes through what campaigns you can use them with and essentially everything you need to know about audience segments so now how do we actually go about targeting audience segments inside Google Ads and what we have to do is come over here to our campaign what we're gonna do is use our call only campaign here so we're gonna click on our campaign we're gonna come down here to audiences once you click audiences, you'll now have three different settings. You'll have exclusions, demographics, and audience segments. Now, demographics is pretty self-explanatory, and this goes over the actual age of your customer, gender, and household income. Is this 100% accurate? Uh, no, but it does a pretty good job at guessing. So it is pretty worthwhile to go after, especially I find in most of our campaigns, if we're not targeting people uh, that are really young in a certain campaign, I generally exclude 18 to 24 because most of the products and services we sell are generally higher end and people ages 18 to 24 can't really afford them or just aren't in the market with them. And once you actually have data in this account, what I like to do is actually look at clicks and then set this to actual conversions or conversion rate. And you can see how well they're doing. So if say 18 to 24 is not converting well, it will pop up with the amount of clicks and the conversion rate and total cost. You can change it to whatever you want. And it will give you a really good idea of what's converting and what's not. And if you see, say, you know, maybe 20 to 34 you have a whole bunch of data on this and you don't like it what you can do is come in here to edit demographics and then we can select a certain ad group so maybe fiberglass pools and then this will pop up and we could get rid of 25 to 34 year olds uh, and just remove them from our actual ad targeting because maybe they're not converting well and we just don't want to target them anymore. Same goes with household income. Maybe we don't want to target the top 10% and maybe we only want to target males. Uh, whatever your actual market is, I would definitely recommend having enough data to actually make this decision. So if you only have like 10 clicks in this actual demographic and going through the actual segments here, I really wouldn't make a decision that quickly. I would wait till month one or month to at the end of it once you have enough clicks and you can actually see the data in this uh, i would say that will give you enough data to actually make a decision again depending on how much data is coming into the account but once you have enough data you'll generally be able to see differentiations between certain age demographics gender and household income so that's what i would recommend doing uh, once you have enough data you can come in here and change them if you'd like to now on to audience segments and demographics is is part of audience segments but google's kind of expanded this out so it's uh 
easier to access. And I think that's a good idea for most people because most people can understand demographics. They kind of struggle with uh, understanding audience segments inside every single campaign. So I understand that and why they've added it. And as you can see here, the if you actually hit on show table here, you can see all of the actual audience segments we're currently targeting. Again, this is a demo account. Uh, so there's no actual data in this account. So what we have to do now is come over here to edit audience segments. And there's two settings here. You can hit the campaign level or the ad group level. I generally recommend setting out a campaign level as this allows you to easily manage everything inside your actual account or your campaign. Uh, it's just much more simpler that way. I think the ad group level is a little too minute for most campaigns, and I think it's overkill. I don't really think you need to segment it at that fine of a uh, level. That being said, I'm sure there are certain times when an ad group level makes sense to set your audience segments at. But for most campaigns for service-based businesses, I think setting it at the campaign level is completely fine. So I'm going to hit campaign here. And then this is going to pop up. And as you can see, we have the observation mode and the targeting mode. I generally don't recommend setting it to targeting mode, especially in the first two months. What I recommend doing is setting it at a observation mode. And what Google does is it doesn't make any bid adjustments. All it does is just collect data from clicks you already got and essentially segments people into these actual groups. And essentially you get to look at how well these groups are actually converting without actually making any bid adjustments on set groups. So it's really nice. You can look at them. And then once you have enough data, usually the end of month one, month too, you can start playing around with it. Maybe uh, for this example, landscape design isn't doing really great. So we could actually set a bid uh, adjustment to decrease the actual bid. So we, we don't want to pay as much. Maybe the cost per lead is just too high. Uh, and then we could also maybe pools and spas is doing fantastic. So we could set an increase in a bid adjustment for that. Uh, but again, you really need data to do this. So the results for every single segment is going to be different for every single campaign because they're different services, different areas. There's a whole bunch of different factors. So it's really nice just to set it in observation mode, you're not going to limit yourself. It's really nice. But say you did want to limit yourself to only these segments, say they're just performing absolutely phenomenally. Uh, what you can do is set targeting. And then now all of these segments will then be set for the actual targeting. So if someone is not in the segment, they will not be shown an ad. So you have to be careful not to make your actual targeting too narrow where you're not going to be getting any clicks or any impressions. That's something I've seen done before uh, in several accounts, actually, where they essentially just target like two or three audiences. And there's not many people people in them and then they're not getting any clicks or impressions and uh, the account doesn't do well just because there's not many people in those actual segments. So my advice here is really to proceed with caution if you're going to set it to targeting. If you choose to set it to targeting, all you have to do is click targeting, then hit save and it will be saved as targeting. But for most people, I think observation mode is a much better idea and it allows us to change our bid adjustments as well. Now, how do we actually go about picking our audience segments? And I generally recommend if we're setting it to observation mode, we're not narrowing ourselves down at all. I would say pick as many relevant uh, market segments as possible. So even home improvement, if we're doing pool installation, home improvement might be a good in-market segment. I don't know. Uh, as you can see here, we have the affinity segments and we have the in-market segments, two different types of segments. So essentially affinity segments is people who are really interested and passionate about a certain subject. So swimming enthusiasts, that might be really good for pool installation. Maybe they want to get a pool. I don't know yet. Uh, for in-market segments, these are people deemed by Google ready to make a purchase or are in the researching phase of the buying journey to actually make a purchase. So it might be really good to actually target these people for pool installation. Now, are all these in-market segments and affinity segments going to be you know, just amazing winners? Are they going to have a massive effect on it? If you leave it in observation mode, it won't have much of an effect on your campaign. Google essentially just takes the data and then any clicks you get through certain segments, it just throws the data in there. It doesn't make any adjustments based off it. So that's why I recommend setting an observation mode just so you can collect the data and then go from there. That being said, I would recommend adding as many relevant segments as possible. So if we're doing pools, we can type in pool here and then actually go about and select certain uh, segments that we're interested in. So So maybe the affinity segment home and garden might be good because people are looking to improve their house or really passionate about that. We can check that mark that off and we've now added it to our audience segmentation. Uh, another thing you can do here is instead of searching, you can hit browse as well and you can go into the detailed demographics here. So you could go into parental status. So maybe parents you're really looking at. Uh, so maybe for pools, we could target uh, people who are uh, parents of grade schoolers. Maybe they're looking to, you know, burn off some energy for their kids and they want to install a pool. We can check that off and we can add this this as a detailed demographic. So we're now going to get the data for this certain segment. Uh, another thing we can do is go after again the 
affinity audiences, and there's a lot of them. Uh, I would recommend looking through this in detail uh, for your actual products or services you're offering in market segments here. Uh, we already have a few here in the in market segments, but again, you can go through here and choose all the ones you want. Uh, you could also go and add in people who have interacted with our business. Now this is to do with actual remarketing and you can add in website visitors, uh, which is a really good idea. You can make a remarketing list. You can have a AdWords optimized list. So that's a custom segment you can add. This takes a little bit more work, but it would definitely be worth adding it once you have your actual global site tag up on your landing page or your website. I would definitely add in the actual remarketing campaigns. Sometimes they have absolutely phenomenal results. Sometimes they don't have as much because uh, it just really depends on your service. So that's something I would also consider adding in. So let, let's just add the remarketing list here. And then we can actually combine segments if you want. So you can actually combine certain segments. We don't really do this all that often just because I like having everything segmented out. I think combining certain segments, you're just going to get a mix of data and you're not really going to know where the results are coming from. But once we're happy with this, all we have to do is hit save. And now all of our audience segments will be saved. And what we can do here is now go in and see all of our audience segments like I showed you before. And the nice thing about observation mode is we can actually, once we have enough data, so say we come over and we understand that the swimming enthusiasts, I'll make this a little bit bigger here, swimming enthusiasts, it's doing really well. Uh, we're, we'll, we're getting cost per leads of let's say $50 or something, and that's just absolutely phenomenal. And we want more of those leads. We can make a bid adjustment by clicking on this little pencil icon here. And then let's say we'll put it up for a 10% increase. I wouldn't recommend doing anything more than five to 10% as I think that's overkill and you don't really know what the results are going to be but 10 5 to 10 percent that's good to start off with um, and all you have to do is come over here you just slide this all the way to the right and you can see your cost per conversion conversion rates total conversions your total cost and it really gives a nice breakdown of what uh, audience segments are performing best and which ones aren't and say we have the home and garden audience segment uh is just not performing well. And we come over here and it says, you know, like uh, cost per lead $280. And that's just, you know, not good for our campaign. All we have to do is click on the pencil icon again, hit decrease, and then let's put a, you know, 10% decrease on that. And now we've set two bid adjustments. And again, if this was an actual live account, you'd have data in this and we'd be able to go through all of it. But this is a nice overview for any segments you actually want to set in your account. Again, set it at the campaign level. It's much easier that way. I would recommend adding as many segments that are relevant to your actual campaign, setting them to observation mode, collecting as much data as possible, then making a decision and slightly adjusting bid limits to get better results for your account. So that's audience segments inside Google Ads. If you have any comments, questions, or concerns, leave them down in the comment section down below. I'd be happy to answer them. Other than that, you guys have a wonderful day and take care.